everybody, my name is Abuna Isaac Berry. Right now, I'm at Columbia University. I'm finally interviewing Albara Jabril in person. Love to meet you. Yeah. Nice to see you in person as well. So instead of talking about affirmative action, I want to know more about uh, who Albara is. And uh, so many people uh, want to win the Gates Scholarship. And even more people, thousands, apply to Columbia. But only a handful get accepted. And he is an incoming Columbia freshman. So I want to know the secrets of how he did it. Because I'm planning to apply to Columbia as well. So... Uh, let's begin. So, first of all, can I ask you, uh, who inspired you during your education? Was there any particularly inspiring elementary school, middle school, or high school stu uh, teacher or student? Yeah, so it wasn't particularly a teacher or student, but um, it was, I would say, my uncle, Muhammad Light. He comes from a very similar background, like we were raised roughly in the same household, and um, our our household, especially coming from an immigrant family, right, that comes with its own set of struggles. Um, and we both have or struggled with ADHD. So um, he ended up graduating from Harvard Law School. So and then that just kind of inspired me to uh, become politically literate and 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 academically literate as well. Wow. Uh, that's a great answer. Uh, personally, I also struggle with getting distracted and not paying attention a lot of the time, you know. So, uh, I also want to ask you, uh, what were the requirements for the Gates Scholarship? Do you think uh, there was anything, uh, do you think there are like any strategies or tips you would tell to a particular applicant who would like to win the Gates Scholarship? Yeah, so in applications in general, when you're applying to a selective either scholarship or school, you want to make yourself stand out in a specific manner, right? Um, I was the co-founder of a podcast that eventually grew to an audience in over 30 countries, right? And that's something that applicants don't usually have, right? And, and I also worked with the New Jersey Consortium for Immigrant Children, and we helped uh, lobby for a bill, um, Cover Old Kids, which provided... Uh, free healthcare to, to those who applied 18 years or younger um, in New Jersey. And that helped roughly a thousand, a uh, uh, hundred thousand uh, kids who are uninsured in New Jersey. So um, key points, right? You, you, you want to have a, an amazing story, right? I grew up in an immigrant household, um, single mother, um, mental health ran through my family as a, as a struggle, right? So you want to show some type of grit in your application you want to show some type of community um service and and your ability to engage society at large in high school you want to show that or at a, at a young age you want to show that you have an inclination to one manifest your thoughts right and show your passions on a uh, either a national level right or or at a high performing level right because colleges when they accept you right they want to um, ensure that they're bringing in someone who will make social change in the future, right? And if you can show an indication of that um, at a young age, then that's likely an indication that you'll do well and you'll be a leader in your field uh, later on in life and hopefully after you graduate from college. Um, so that's uh, that's one point. And you, you also have to have something called a spike. A spike is something that you're application can revolve around right so for you it, it might be mathematics or physics right for, for me it was political science and um specifically immigrant uh advocacy right and i've reoriented my life in accordance with those spikes right so all of my extracurriculars my awards um um and my community work all revolves around activism political science um, um and uh, communal engagement right so your application ha has to have a spike and you, you need to show a high performance in that spike um, so colleges can get an understanding of the individual you are and more importantly if you can have a a story that can reinforce that spike right so for me it's it's something personal right like i came from an immigrant family right so i'm i have the intrinsic motivation to perform well right um so you want to have, have a passion and obviously grades are a standard so yeah yeah okay that actually uh, is a great response. How important do you think uh, test scores are? Like, 
SAT, ACT, uh, those standardized tests that nobody likes to take <laughs> instead of those competitions that everybody wants to put on their resume. Yeah, so, I mean, with any, with any exam, um, especially like the SATs or the ACTs, you can, to some extent, derive an IQ score from. However, it's also very trainable. Right, so you can train yourself well just through practice, practice, and practice, and perform well on the exam. Um, regarding importance, I do think it still should be implemented because it standardizes the 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 way applicants are are viewed. Right, so like it's a single test applied to all applicants. Right, so that's a metric that um, admissions officers can compare um, one student to another. But on the same hand, there was this uh, study done, I forgot which exact study, but um, it basically encapsulates the idea that the SAT score doesn't exactly um, predict future success. What does predict future success is one's extracurricular um, engagement and extra extracurricular success and the GPA, right? So if those two are, are, uh, are, are well um, um, performed, right, then that's a better predictor for future success rather than the SAT score, which can be easily trained uh, to perform well in. Yeah, uh, that's true. Uh, I once heard from somebody, I don't exactly remember who, uh, that the SAT doesn't really uh, tr train how good you are in general, but how good you are cracking the SAT. Exactly. So uh, I, I can also see that you're a very trained uh, uh, scientific student. Uh, because of uh, uh, the way you reference studies like it's nothing. Uh, I have to <laughs> read a lot just to get the main idea of something. So, uh, I, that also leads right into my next question, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, maybe I'm a good question writer, yeah. but uh, what are the extracurriculars you've taken? So, let's see, freshman year, I joined... And this is a tip to all uh, uh, young applicants who are looking to go to college. Um, I joined the majority of clubs at my high school, right? And this is key, right? You want to go through a list, highlight the ones that seem interesting, right? And then go to all of their meetings first year. And as you progress through high school, you, you, you want to knock off the clubs that weren't as interesting, right? And stick with the ones that were, right? So personally... Um, freshman year, I joined the academic decathlon team. Um, we eventually made it to the national level and, and I was awarded the MVP award. Um, and then I ran uh, track and cross country. We won states in cross country. Um, let's see, I was the three-time three, three vice president of Key Club. Key Club is a uh, school and communal development uh, organization and club. I was the, the three-time uh, vice president of that. And then um, through that organization, I've won awards on a state level um, at Key Club Conventions in New Jersey. Um, and I was also heavily involved in student council. I was my student body president um, um, and then made vast changes uh, in the school constitution and things like that. Um, Outside of school, I, as I mentioned previously, I was part of the New Jersey Consortium for Immigrant Children, and I was the co-founder of a podcast. I also uh, was the founder of the Innocent Initiative, and through the Innocent Initiative, we teamed up with local nonprofits in the county, and then we connected them with school clubs uh, to increase civic engagement um, and uh, things like that, and also, also provided by the innocent initiative we spread books we built little libraries throughout uh the county to spread the love of reading and knowledge um and i pro I, pro I provided although this was short i provided therapy to high school students i have to submit my application by the end of my first quarter of senior year i've only uh, participated in one or two clubs so uh and most of my extracurriculars have been on my own time outside of school so how do you think that will affect my application? Yeah, so, so a common misconception about colleges um, and specific admissions is that 
we have to be a well-rounded student, right? That's a common misconception. That's not particularly the case specifically with you because um, although quantity is measured, right, also quality of work is measured, right? So if you're performing at such a high level, right, like yourself, Mr. Young, prof uh, young Professor, um, then colleges will see that as an indication for future success. And, and that proves your credibility in a certain subject, in a, in a certain field. Um, and because you have a bright mind, then I honestly have no doubt that colleges would, would, would want to take you in um, because of all of the things you've done. Um, yeah, so don't necessarily worry about quantity. You don't want to spread yourself out too, um, too much. Um, but as long as you perform at a high level, then I think you're solid. And you've done that already. So. Thanks. A lot of students get confused on that. So uh, what does that mean? What is early decision? What is regular decision? I myself don't know, but this guy has been watching college application videos since he was born. So, uh, uh, so can you explain what early decision and regular decision is to all the confused high schoolers watching this? Yeah, of course. So um, there are three types of decisions. One, there's uh, early decision. Two, there's early action. And then three, there's a uh, regular decision. So early decision is legally binding, right? So you usually only apply to one school. And if you get in, then, then, then you have to go unless there are some um, rash circumstances that happen that prevent you from going, right? Um, this typically has a higher acceptance rate because it shows interest in your application, right? It's like, I'm applying to your school early, right? Let me in, banging, banging on your door, right? Um, early action is basically the same thing as uh, uh, early decision, but it's not legal, legally binding, right? So you can apply early action to a dozen schools, right? And still show interest, but not all schools offer er er early action. Um, yeah, so you can apply to multiple schools, early action and um, early, early decision and early action. They come in the earlier months of the year. That's hence earlier, right? Um, so that's specifically why R regular decision um, has a lower acceptance rate uh, simply because it's later on in the year. All right. Um, um, and that's when the majority of applications actually apply. Right. So you, you are competing with a broader applicant pool. Um, so that has a lower acceptance rate. But um, many people do. I applied early decision. Uh, sorry. Uh, regular de uh, decision to Columbia. Um, I got a likely, likely letter, right? So um, I knew I was most likely go going to get in. Um, but yeah, yeah, it just d uh, depends on preference. If you can apply early, right, show that interest. But some students usually wait later on in the year because of their application. They feel like they can add a bit more t t to their application. Like they might be waiting for some rewards um, that are coming in in the next couple of months. And they don't want to just put that on their early uh, application because it hasn't been uh, established yet. Um, so that's one of the reasons why students may delay their early ap application. But honestly, if you can, go for it. Um, um, it'll boost your chances. And you, you always want to open up the uh, uh, door of, of, of acceptance for yourself. So, Yeah, that really clarifies things. What would you say is the best response to where do you see yourself in five to ten years? I do see myself after uh, getting my undergraduate degree, I do see myself earning a PhD in clinical psychology and then later on pursuing a career in uh, political science as, as a public servant. Wait a second, this is pretty funny. Uh, why don't we actually read what this says? Uh, to fellowship and love of Alma Mater, uh, <laughs> class of 1886, arts, minds, political science, 25th anniversary. I did not know this was here. I just <laughs> noticed it while we were talking. Wow, yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. <laughs> wow, that's uh, certainly a coincidence. Want to add anything? Are there any questions you wa would want me to ask you? Or um, I would like to add that if you're applying to college early, <laughs> don't be so confident that you're going to get into your early uh, action school. Um, I was, but I, I accidentally submitted the wrong essay to Harvard, and then, and then I got deferred. I would say to all of the students out there um, applying to college, I would say 
properly uh, uh, spread out the workload, um, especially when you're applying to prestigious universities. You don't want to be stressed out the entire time um, along with your schoolwork and extracurriculars. Um, and really just plan it out, right? right? Um, the more you can plan something out, the less anxiety you're going to have around that activity, right? So um, manage your time well and, and you'll be fine. Apply early action if you can. But yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, uh, that's some pretty good advice. Uh, I'm not very good at time management myself, but I've been working on it. So yeah, manage your time because soon you'll have none left. So uh, thank you, thank you, everybody, and especially uh, thank you, Obara. It was uh, very nice interviewing you.